Welcome everyone. How are you? Welcome back. I wanted to pop on live today because I received this letter from a neighbor who is a Jehovah Witness and she likes to send uh, letters every so often. Well, this time I just couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, so I respond to her. Sometimes I respond by email and sometimes I respond uh, by, email, by mail, snail mail. Um, and so this lady writes to me and says, I'm a Jehovah Witness. Um, and I'm writing because uh, there's this new publication called Enjoy Life Forever. Um, and it's to help you understand biblical truth. And uh, she says that many people don't believe, view the Bible as an outdated source. Um, but the Bible is, has timeless wisdom. And she cites what well, she always cites, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So I go to my Bible. <clears throat> and I um, write back to her and I say, Hey, <laughs> dearest friend. <laughs> My name is Marla, and I'm responding to your letter that you sent me on the publication of your organization. And I said, and I said, I agree. The Bible has timeless wisdom. Um, and I put down, and I say, and I rewrite, and I look up in my Bible, and I quote my Bible uh, with hers. So I wanted to read what she quoted. I don't know which Bible she uses, but she's a Jehovah Witness, so I'm sure they have their own Bible. And it says, all scripture, this is a Jehovah Witness Bible. All scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, for reproving, for setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness, so that man, uh, the, the man of God may be fully competent, completely equipped for every good work. And so I go to my Bible and I write to her. And I put down 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And I write, I copy actually exactly what my Bible says which should be the universal Bible that most people uh, read because I've, I've, I have a gazillion Bibles from different sources and I've actually verified our Bible against uh, other Christian Bibles. And they're pretty much the same. Um, so except for the Jehovah Witness. So I'm going to let you know which words, I'll know which words are different. <coughs> Um, and you could tell me the truth of it. Um, write, write, comment down below and let me know what your Bible says. Okay, so 2 Timothy 3, 16 says, All scripture is inspired by God. Okay, that is true. And it should be in every Bible. And is useful for teaching the truth. In this Bible, it says, I'm beneficial for teaching the it leaves out the truth. It's it's not been it's useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living, so that the person who serves God may be fully qualified and equipped to do every kind of good deed. So her Bible skips for teaching truth, and her Bible writes it as for reproving, setting things straight, for disciplining in righteousness, um, so that man of God may be fully competent. Our Bible says to be fully qualified not competent, man by himself is not competent in the Bible. And that's why we have priests, so that the priest can help you 
learn the truth, okay? Um, completely equipped so that you can serve God in the way that he wants you to serve God. So I wrote that for her. And then I say, I invite you to attend one of our masses. And I sent her to, um, to Father Nolan's YouTube. <laughs> um, I, I think it's like the competent. Um, I, I forgot. I just Googled. I just YouTube searched on YouTube for Father Nolan. And I sent her to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Because I believe this is the best church in Colorado. <laughs> um, if you've never been to it, you should go. Um, and I wrote down the mass schedule and the Sunday mass schedule and the confession. Um, <clears throat> and then I said, you should attend one of our masses um, and talk to a priest. And then I said, once you attend one of our masses... You will discover the truth of the Bible and you will be able to learn how to live in this life according to God's commandments so that you have hope in being able to be go to heaven because not everyone will go to heaven. So then I turn to my Bible and I cite exactly how to define true teaching from false prophets. And I'm going to go to John 2. No, 1 John, uh, 1 John 4. And I, read, and I wrote pretty much the whole entire scripture for 1 through 21. And then five through all of five. Oh, well, one through five. I, I stopped at five. Um, and this is what it says. The true spirit and the false spirit. My dear friends, do not believe all who claim to have the spirit. But test them to find out if the spirit they have comes from God. For many false prophets have gone out everywhere. This is how you will be able to know whether it is God's spirit. Anyone who acknowledges that Jesus Christ comes as a human being has a spirit that comes from God. But anyone who denies this about Jesus does not have the spirit of God. The spirit that has it that has is from the enemy of Christ. You heard that it would come and now it is here in the world already. But you who belong to God, my children, and have defeated the false prophets because of because the spirit who is in you is more powerful than the spirit in those who belong to the world. Those false prophets speak about matters of the world. And the world listens to them because they belong to the world. <clears throat> but we belong to God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever does not belong to God does not listen to us. This then is how we can tell the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And the spirit of error, you know who it is, right? Because this is a children's Bible. <laughs> it's the devil. It's Satan. Those who belong to the world are Satan's children. Those who belong to God are God's children. God is love. Love is not love. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. 
Whoever loves a child of God and knows God, whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if this is how God loves us, then we should love one another. No one has ever got, seen God. If this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in union with us. And his love is made perfect in us. We are sure that we live in union with God and that he lives in union with us because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and tell others that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If we declare that Jesus is the Son of God, we live in union with God, and God lives in union with us. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, and those who live in love live in union with God. And God lives in union with them. Love is made perfect in us in order that we may, may be cur have courage on Judgment Day. And we will have it because our life in this world is the same as Jesus Christ's life. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. So then love has not been made perfect in anyone who is afraid because fear has to do with punishment. We love because God first loved us. If we say we love God but hate others, God, others, we are liars. For we cannot love God whom we have not seen if we do not love others whom we have seen. This includes Trump. Okay? If you, don't, if you hate Trump, you cannot say you love others and you love God. Because if you love God, then you love Trump. Got it? The command that Christ has given us is this. Whoever loves God must love others also. It is a must, not permissive, not may love others, must love others. And how do we win this world over? Our victory over the world. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Messiah is a child of God. So if you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, you're a child of God. And whoever loves a father loves his child also. This is how we know that we love God's children. It is by loving God and obeying his command. Yeah, if you love God, you're going to obey everything God commands you to obey. You will not sin against God. For our love for God means that we obey his commands. And his commands are not too hard for us. Because every child of God is able to defeat the world. And we win the victory over the world by means of our faith. Who can defeat the world? Only the person who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And I wrote to her at the end, and I said, so my friend, if you have any further questions and you want to learn more about the truth, 
please visit one of our masses, especially Mount Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and talk to a priest afterwards. He will teach you about the Word of God and the truth of it. Yes, we have some churches that are neocats and kind of fuzzy, fuzzy doctrines that adhere to the world. But our true, but the true church of Jesus Christ is the Roman Catholic church so if you're roman catholic do not leave the church just because our pope has forgotten how to teach the word of god and he has fuzzy doctrines he is not he's in, he's not infallible he is the keeper of the word of god but he is human and as a human, he's not perfect. So we must pay, pray for our priests and our bishops and the Pope and the church. You cannot destroy the church ever. Jesus will come one day and he, and if we are not perfect in him, guess what? If we do not fight for him, if we don't fight right now in America for what is true, we may be living for a very long time under a totalitarian government. Because there is freedom in God alone. And morality comes from God and from his Bible. Morality does not come from politics. You cannot remove morality from the law. In America, in America, we consent to law. And law and morality are weaved into every aspect of our society and the powers that be right now what are they doing they are mus muddling up morality politics and morality do not mix law and morality mix but a political question morality is debated and argued in Congress as they are fashioning the laws of this country. And if our politicians are not moral and, do, and we do not hold them accountable for law, then we're going to lose. Because in this country, what comes first? God is omnipotent and he created us humans equal in his image. And because he created us, he governs us in America. We humans created the constitution and the Constitution of the United States created government. So who governs government? We do. And the Constitution is the bill of rules for government to follow so that they don't trespass on our inalienable rights that come from God. Government is at the bottom of the totem pole in America. Signing off. When, how are you? So, I just want to ask you to, um, if you like this video, please subscribe to my email list, my email community, and um, 
where I will share my education critiques and I will share um, stuff that I'm doing. Um, it will be non-salesy, it will be friendly. Um, it, it might be sometimes I might write too much, sometimes I'm, I'll write just right. Um, you might not read it all the way down, um, but the content that I will share is content that educates you. And right now, I wanna share a book that I absolutely love and I couldn't share when I was an Osborne Books and More book lady. Because, you know, I'm supposed to support and represent Osborne Books and More. However, this book is called El Flamboyan Amarillo. And it's by Georgina Lazaro, illustrated by Lulu de la Cree. I highly recommend it. This is a really good book, for ch a really good children's book. My son picked it. He found it. Um, and I had to buy it. Um, the book can be found on Amazon. I will share the link in the description below and you can go and shop Amazon and that will give me a little bit of credit so that I make a little bit of money um, supporting other authors that are really good um, and have uh, and are worth the time and day. This book is in Spanish, and the, the illustrations are gorgeous. And it's about a little boy who, um, who goes out with his mom when he's younger, and they, she rests underneath a flamboyant. This is a type of tree that only grows in West Africa. And every time, so, whenever you get the seeds and you try to regrow this tree, the yellow flamboyant does not grow anywhere else. It's very rare. Um, and so this little boy, I can't reveal the ending because it's really pretty. But the flamboyant, it does not grow the same color. Um, and it's a really pretty story because the little boy, he plants it with his mom and he watches it grow and the tree grows alongside the boy um and it's a great little science experiment um but in the end um the tree is fully grown and it's not quite what he expected um the tree to be um so it's really really good it's really really pretty in spanish um I won't want to reveal it, even if you don't speak Spanish, because it might be in English. <laughs> so you just got to look it up. It's um, the flamboyant tree, um, the yellow flamboyant, and um, it's a really pretty story. And it's, uh, it ha this is an, a limited edition. So... Just share it with your friends and enjoy it. The other book that I wanted to recommend today is Noah's Ark. And this is by Peter Spire. And this has no, it's just a picture book. And I love this book. And when Isaac was little, we, um, he just breathes through the pages. And the pages are just pictures. And the pictures are gorgeous, let me tell you. They are um, the Noah's Ark is gorgeous. Look at those pictures. Um, I highly recommend it. I will also share it. It also won an award right here. Um, I will share it down below in the description. And you could, um, purchase a book. Um, it straight through my link. And that will help support me, um, and this channel. Um, thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed the little lesson that I had with this letter that I got from someone that is a Jehovah Witness and also misspelled my name. They put Maria instead of Marla. I mean, hello. If you're going to recruit somebody, you don't misspell their name. And if you do, you apologize.
Anyway, they didn't tell her she misspelled my name. Hopefully she she noticed it when I wrote when when I signed the letter. And um she realizes that she misspelled my name. And hopefully um I convert her to the Catholic to the true faith. The true faith is the Catholic Church. And if you're not in the Catholic Church, let me tell you, you're missing out on all the sacraments that Jesus Christ wanted you to have because no church is the true church. Martin Luther divided us all.